and Jackson here with Easy Loyalty Lawn Care. Today, I'm gonna compile, or over this next few days, I'm gonna compile my top 10 best lawn care tips for when you're starting out a business or when you're three, five years in, just little tips and tricks to make yourself more efficient and work better as a team or solo operator because that's what it's all about. Efficiency is key in a, any business, I believe. So I'm gonna talk about tip number one really quickly, striping. I know my stripes aren't killer or anything here. This is a pretty weedy yard in the back. We got, but you can tell they're here. And it took me, cause this is my first year using zero turn. So, and I'd been using a riding mower for the last two years. I got pretty good with the riding mower, but after getting a zero turn, it took me a little bit. So it took me, I would say about 30 hours or so to get my stripe game dialed in as far as getting them straight. The concept of striping is you go one direction, turn, come back the other direction. We all pretty much know that. The one thing is I get asked a lot, how do you keep your stripes I mean, these are pretty straight in my opinion. They're not my best work or anything. And how do you keep them like, uh, the you know, best way I could say is like the perfect thickness, or, like relatively 60 inches thick. Probably for me, I'm doing about 58, 50, 57 inches thick because there is overlap and we will talk about that real quick. But first of all, I want to talk about, this is a great example for how, if you're starting out with a zero turn or stand on or of any sorts, how to get straight stripes. Uh, real easy way is uh, to pick, like if you wanna go angled, I would probably, I wouldn't go that far to that tree there, but let's just talk about straight because you start out with the straight ones and you can work your way up to diamond patterns and everything else. So if you got a property like mine with a good fence, a relatively good straight fence, it makes your job a lot easier. Just run the, I call it the uh, edging, which would be that side of the deck. Don't scrape the fence because it can tear the fence up and your deck, but it happens, okay? So just run your deck up there and you get a relatively straight line. And say this bush tree wasn't here, I would just come directly back. And so my first stripe would be heading this direction, okay, along the fence line. And then on my way back, I would be in this position and how I would get my perfectly straight edge. Now you do need to look, so there's two different ways. So when you're going straight, especially along the fence line, first make sure you're not gonna hit this side along the fence when you're going there or on this side, whatever. And then just look straight ahead. Don't look at your deck because that will mess you up. But pick an object, pick a fence post. We got a fence post right there. Pick that or pick a tree of any sorts and just go straight. You can see I'm pretty straight with that fence post back there halfway through the mower. And that's how you get your straight lines. You pick an object and just drive straight towards it. And then when you're coming back, so if I were coming back to stripe it this direction, this side of my deck would need to overlap just a few inches. Like, let's see, I, you can kind of tell, let's see what overlap we got here. So you can see, I made my other pass and you really, I'm a little thick overlapping here. You want to keep it about halfway down your cast or just a few inches right here on the side of your deck. If, if I'm messing with the camera, I can't tell because it's pretty sunny out. But you just want to overlap a few inches with that. You don't want to be overlapping with your caster. You just want to be overlapping. Don't go past the... Uh, anti-scalp roller with this line because you can tell there's a bit of overlap from where I cut and it's just it's right honestly uh, right in the outside of the it's right my overlap is just about right here on this anti-scalp roller and then go slow go slow and you work your way up so that's my tips on how to stripe that's tip number one I hope that helps you guys out and tip that's number two when first I a lawn care business you can offer commercial or residential weed pulling. All you, you don't even need a bucket, see, but I forgot my bucket. Usually I just have a five gallon bucket, pair of gloves, or just use your bare hands and go and just pull the weeds. Just go to different restaurants. This is an accounting place I'm at. You can even do it for house. Just set up a year, uh, weekly or month, not weekly, monthly contract for pulling the weeds. $65 an hour minimum is what you wanna be charging for that type of stuff. Uh, bill one hour minimum and then up of course as it goes on nobody complains when there's not many weeds in their garden bed so if you come by more than once a month they're probably not complaining but just make sure they know that so that's a great add-on service and i started doing it before i was licensed because i'm not spraying anything i'm not putting down anything all i'm doing is coming here and pulling weeds with my hands so you should be good you don't really need to be insured but now i'm insured and everything so i'm good everywhere but this is my tip number two for starting out all lawn care business, offer weed services, great, very profitable services. Uh, go pick yourself up a $5, five gallon barrel bucket from Lower King, and that's all you really need to get started. You can just drive around to, you could do 10 in a very short period of time, 
um, and you can get those special weed pulling tools or you can just use your hands like you can see it's not that bad here I do this one monthly and I make a decent amount of money off of it so that's my tip number two. alrighty guys so tip number four for this is about trimming so for me when I trim around any house or maybe not so much a fence line but especially a building right behind me we're doing a big commercial warehouse that I maintain and stuff and I start here and I just walk forward the whole way down or I walk backwards pulling the trimmer with me if that makes sense okay pulling it along with me but I usually just walk straight forwards and then walk back along the fence line inside here and then the same out there well my reason for doing that with my echo the trimmer head will spin oh there's my glasses oops sorry my trimmer head will spin this way so think about it, it's going this way and it's gonna fling the grass out towards the yard. And it just, for me, especially residential, I know residential people do care. It doesn't fling grass against the building as much. It looks a lot better in my opinion. Gives it a nice quality uh, finished cut with the trimmer. You know that's what the trimmer's partially for in my opinion. And along the fence line, one reason I do is, see this dead grass here? This is from when this, I cut this property when it was about that tall. Maybe a little taller. That's what that's from. I'm still tr working to get rid of that. That's why I'm doing that because it doesn't splatter that dead grass all along the fence line. I'm trimming and around garden beds. That's always great because it keeps out the mulch. So that's tip number four uh, for top ten best business tips when you're starting a lawn and landscaping business. And number five also revolves around the trimmer and mower. It's very simple, but I see so many people that don't do it, and I just don't understand how personally wear safety glasses even if they're these cheapo ones or sunglasses doesn't matter to me just wear something that covers your eyes your squinting isn't going to cut it and when i'm mowing there's so much debris floating around everywhere i have to wear glasses or it just gets in my eyes and i can't see and it just irritates me and it ruins my day so make sure and wear your safety glasses and hearing protection is a plus i'm going to do a video on isotunes versus my airpod pros they have their pros and they have their cons so stay tuned for that but that's tip. all right guys tip number six is when you're edging with a string trimmer for me personally i will hold it with two hands i wish i had a camera stand to show you oh or i will hold it over my shoulder kind of like so with a hand on the trigger and a hand down here and walk forward i used to not be good at walking forward i was best at walking backwards with it it's just easier if you stand in the grass and edge outside like you're inside and you're edging outside not vice versa where you're walking on the sidewalk you get a better more angled edge and now if you take a lot of practice and time you can get really good at walking and it takes time of course like i'm getting to where i can do both backwards and forwards sidewalk walking or walking in the grass but for starting out i recommend walking backwards and find what way is comfortable to the it could be straight up or it could be more relaxed and angled where you have the trimmer kind of like let's see where you have the trimmer down more like this and you're just holding it like that and walking it could be like that or it could be straight up and down but just something to get that nice clean this isn't the cleanest edge or anything i've ever done just a nice clean edge along the walkway and you don't want to put a bunch of line in the ground you only want to put maybe that much if you can tell by shout which is about two inches and that of course takes practice line length makes a huge difference because you don't want to be digging in the ground it slows the trimmer down bogs it up takes more fuel and can rip the edge up more it doesn't give it a clean defined look like we got going here and curves are not very hard curves in my opinion are the easiest to go around and here like we talked about you can see i go around this way so grass is not blown in the beds so that's tip number seven or eight i'm guessing seven i think i just want to talk about strapping your equipment down even if you have an enclosed trailer you should always be strapping equipment down no matter whenever you're pulling the trailer with the truck you always strap it down i'm serious like you can get in some serious trouble with the law for one and for two if somebody rear ends you or t-bones you this thing you may think the brake's going to keep it and it's heavy enough to stay on the trailer it will go flying and then sometimes insurance will be like oh you didn't have a strap down so we're not covering it so you can get yourself into a whole lot of trouble and for me it was hard for me to strap it down constantly it was just annoying to deal with the long strap so i found these retractable ericsson 
straps that roller king let's show you how they work real quick you just pop it in here real quick and i'll put a link in the description down below for these they were like 40 bucks you can even get some of that mountain side of your trailer i like this style better just pop it right under there and to see how it's a little loose there you just hit this red button and it will retract to where you need it but i need to we'll see it's hard to do with one hand but let's see keep going okay now that's in there i'm gonna pull this up and just there we go and look I, can you ratchet strap with one hand i don't think so and i do one on each side most Euro turns will have a tie down point in the front or in the back, or you can go to Ballard Products and get the power locker. I wanted to keep my trailer pretty clean and free from obstacles on the ground because I use it for hauling landscape materials. So that's why I just want the straps and it's a little cheaper. Um, I have a mess right now with my weed wire string. Man, alive, that's not good. So I strap down both sides before I leave. And as you can probably tell, I'm dealing with some crazy rain and stuff, grass is wet. The good old Kubota is doing a real good heck of a job on it. I'm really proud of this mower and I really am proud with my purchase and I know I made a good decision. With that being said, being said tip number eight or nine, I'm pretty sure it's eight. I always cut, but for my speed feet heads or just normal heads, cut uh, 15 feet of trimmer line. Remember, these are efficiencies to help you be more efficient within your first few years or just things you've never really thought of or learned while doing lawn care take some trimmer line put it in your pocket or cargo pocket if you have it and so you don't have to walk all the way imagine if i was trimming on the other side of that fence line right there all the way down by a trash can and i had to walk all the way back that's five minutes there and back so that's just a waste of time remember when in lawn care you want to be as efficient as you possible as most efficient as you can be to make be the most profitable to enter in the long run make the most money but you also got to balance that with good quality of work and another great efficiency is racks see now i got a hoist this big old heavy beast of a blower out of the truck bed usually i just put it on the back of the trailer when i could just have a rack i've just been a little lazy and i guess can i'm not it's not the end of the world for me having to hoist this up and out but it's starting to get a little annoying so i think i am going to pick up a blower rack here shortly Alrighty guys, so here's another tip for you. Whenever you're mowing and you have a route, I'm sure you guys know, and if not, I hope you learn, you need to have route density. You need to have a house here, here, here. I don't mow any of these houses here, but this is a big commercial property. Route density can be a little more slack with commercial properties, I feel. But when you're doing residential, you have to have route density or you're not gonna make very much money, especially with the price of gas and windshield time you're going to be paying yourself potentially an employee that's windshield time burn if you add all that up all the windshield time you have all throughout the months all throughout the year it adds up to be a lot and it will surprise you so with that being said you need to have good route density way i get good route density is marketing by flyers and your work your work will speak tons for you if you do good work the neighbors are gonna see it they're gonna be like i wish my yard looked like that shoot them a fair price get hand out some flyers so they get your name in your head and if they ever say they break their arm or something say you go on vacation let's be a little more uh nice say they say they go on vacation they're gonna be like oh i'm gonna need somebody to cut my grass for the four weeks i'm gonna be gone or my yard's gonna look like a jungle oh he's loyalty lawn care is the man to call so that is one of my other great tips route density is key in any business Here's another tip i learned pretty fast is running my lawn and landscaping business is when you're trimming, especially when you got like a long fence line like this, you can see here, I got here about halfway and then more there because fence really eats up your trimmer string. I packed myself enough trimmer string to be able to feed myself a brand new head. So I just ran out of trimmer string. So thankfully I had this in my pocket and I don't have to walk all the way back to the truck, which is all around the other side of the building there. And just be a time killer because when you're doing lawn care and stuff, especially when you're by yourself, um as a solo operator or even with an employee it's really all of, and even when you're running multiple crews it's all about efficiency because the faster you get it done and even you need to keep good quality work in that time but if the faster you get it done the more money you make so this is a little efficiency key i have for my own business so i recommend never leave the trailer uh without weed whacker string in your pocket because you will never know when you're gonna run out i like to do the same with gas i know ballard makes a little uh 
fuel tanks. I don't have any properties that big, so I always fill up just before I go do a bunch of trimming. So that's a tip for you right there.